We've been talking a lot about uh, prices of electricity and gas and just the general well-being of getting on with things. Well, Frank's uh, been in touch with me and uh, Frank, you, you've got your own company, but you also run a, a support group on Facebook, which I obviously want to concentrate on, which is giving people advice on what to do in these times when you think twice about turning on anything, I suppose. Yeah, I, I wish I did have my own company. I just I just work for a renewable company, but um, I've been pushing renewables now for best part of two and a half years it all started from when i had my solar panels fitted i had an eight kilowatt system fitted on my roof which consists wow. of about 23 panels i've got storage batteries and the main reason i fitted it all was to start off with to save money because you save you save money but it, and you also get the bonus of being green as well Things are moving so fast before we started i, I got it years ago and it cost a fortune yeah and couldn't have that much allowed by the MUA. Now things have improved on, on what you can store and it's the prices have come down a lot, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, back in the day when you had it fitted, it was probably f over £5,000. I think it's £10,000 with 2.8 kilowatts. Now yeah, that sounds well, like nothing, doesn't it? Nowadays, depending on obviously the house and whether it needs scaffold and things like that, yeah. you're generally paying about £2,000 a kilowatt now. Oh. And things always come down. Though, to put they? that into, in, into a picture, it's you roughly get three panels for that, three, hundred, three, wow. three times 370 watt panels. What, what's the, the thing though now, that, that can pay back presumably fairly good, although you get less money from the MUN you used to and all that stuff. Yeah, thing. well, I fitted my system two and a half years ago and at the time, the system I put on, I paid about 15,000 for it. Mm -hmm. I've got eight kilowatts. And the more you put on, it's the slightly less per kilowatt you pay. So you, I paid a little bit less. But when I had mine put on, I was looking at a seven and a half year payback. Mm -hmm. But with the recent price increase now, which is going to go up to 34p per kilowatt shortly, that, that brings that payback now, down now to about 5.2 years. Wow. And, the more, and the more it goes up okay. is, is the quicker the payback. So, I mean, besides selling it back, do you recommend these batteries? I mean, they're coming down in prices as well to store your own electricity? Batteries are a good idea, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it's one of the things I would fit if you've got disposable cash I, ha I had some money I, I could store it with but that's only because I've got an air source heat pump ah. and primarily my house is heated by electric so it's a, it is handy to store the energy got but it. if you size it right if you've got a gas or an oil boiler the, the MUA say now that the average house uses about 12 kilowatts a day of electric so if you size the system right for your house it will mirror your usage through the day in the house so you'll, you'll never really need to store it. Mine's stored more so because the latter part of the day, when, when the sun goes in and you're not producing, I then get what I've produced on the batteries back into the system. Okay, so air pumps and, and ground pumps and all these things, is, is this still early days though for that technology? I've had my, I fitted my first air source heat pump 10 years ago. Around about the time I think you said your, your solar was fitted. <laughs> You'd be a very early pioneer then, wouldn't you? So, but recently, it, it, it was it was somebody who was uh, doing a pilot scheme who did air conditioning units and they thought well we'll try air source heat pumps. Mm -hmm. So it had its day after a few years and I've now just fitted a, a Mitsubishi EcoDan for the from the company I work for now but they mm -hmm. fitted at the time. And the technology is that good now with air source heat pumps that if you don't particularly want to dig your whole garden up these are every bit as good as ground source. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it, if you're doing a new build nowadays and you can bury the pipes in the ground, then yeah, put ground source in. But if you're just doing a retrofit now, this is far easier. You just put it on the back of your house, same size as an air conditioning unit. So this is just a, a whole area that's going to be expanding because people were thinking maybe about it, but it wasn't that high up the agenda. Now it's become crucial. Has that not put prices up and made a shortage of things or what's going on? It hasn't put a price up, but what I'm... I'm glad to hear now is is the MUA are right behind it they've got a pilot they're on their second pilot scheme now and I think at the minute there's, there's about 200 people waiting to have them fitted mm. and basically what it is through the MUA it's a it's a 10-year deal where we serve it there's, there's, there's two companies at the minute who are fitting them for the MUA we come around survey it and do the heat loss calculations on the house to make sure they get the right size heat pump and the process from there is it's a 10-year deal it's interest free through the MUA, you just pay it on your electricity bill. And in that is a 10 years 
service plan and guarantee. So you pay, say, £100 a month now for 10 years, and that, mm. that's you with your heat pump. That's fitted, installed, commissioned, and away you go. It's interesting because the MU have had a mind change, thank goodness, because yeah. when I got these things put in, there were surveys and all there was hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of yeah. money before I did anything just to jump through enough hoops to get yeah. connected to the MU. Same with a car, electric cars. If you want the thing, it, 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 thousands of pounds or something. Well, at least hundreds, sorry, not thousands. Yeah. Hundreds of pounds to get onto that low tariff. And it seems like it could be a payback many, many years down the road. So The, the process is a lot easier now. Mm. Basically, what, what happens is if you put a car charger on your house or you put an air source heat pump on, what you have to what the supplier has to submit is what's called um, an additional load request. So it's basically saying you're going to put a heavy load on. The MUA survey your income and mains. And if it's suitable, they allow you, which in most cases it is. Mm -hmm. uh, or they will limit, with the likes of electric car charger, the maximum you can have at home is a 7 kilowatt charger on your house. But there are cases where the income and line is not as stable as newer properties. And they might just stipulate you can set your charger to 5 kilowatts. Right. So that's how they balance and I, I do appreciate the MU with, with having to suddenly get lots of more power coming in if the sun comes out and then the sun goes in. It must be all very interesting how they have to manage that against the, well, what they're producing. But it's, it's going to be more and more, isn't it? Yeah, this is something that a lot of people don't understand. Now, when you have a solar system, if, if the entire Isle of Man fitted solar, you can, you can have it set up where nobody can export. So it's not a case of every house has it, has it on their roof and becomes overload because every single house has a, a, a different setting for their solar. So, so what they do is when you decide I'm going to have solar, mm -hmm. we'll come round and we will put in a request form to the MUA and it's called the G98 or a G99 uh, request. And what it is, the G98 is you can have up to three and a half kilowatts on your roof. The G99 is then goes to anything above that. And I think you can have, I think I was allowed. That's maybe what you're up. on. I'm, well, I've got nine kilowatts, but I think on a domestic mm. single phase, you can have 10 kilowatts of solar. But the way they get round it is, if you fit a big system and you've got nowhere to put that electric, they fit um, a thing on your mains called an export limiter. And what that is, is if the MUA say to you, your yours isn't stable enough to put a lot of electricity back down, there is a little control device put on there they, it won't allow you to export any more than three kilowatts at a time right. so when mine was first fitted i had to have a 3.6 export limiter fitted right. so basically if i've got nowhere to put the electric and i'm producing massive amounts of electricity if i'm producing seven kilowatts of electricity it will only allow 3.6 back down the grid and the inverter kicks in and that shuts down then right. so basically you are you're wasting electricity but it's to save that overload on the grid yeah so your Facebook group got 700 odd members, I think, isn't it? It's about 850. 800. 850. So you're providing this as, a, as your own, off your own yeah, back, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. I, just, you're here today. I do it because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. It's to get a better understanding across to people. You wouldn't believe the amount of questions I get. And even to the point where someone will say, well, I've got X amount of pounds. What would you recommend out of the list of things to do? And I'll say to them, I do this first. Yeah. And I do that. I'd hold back on that. Yeah and maybe spend more on the solar and less on the batteries. But the most important thing is size it to the usage of your house. Okay, where do they find you on Facebook? What's it called, your group? It's called uh, Renewable Energies Health and Advice from Experience. Wow, that's where, where, and do you think this is it now? The future is finally here that people will start generating more and more on, who knows? If, I mean, we may not be in the sunniest places, but we are in the windiest places, and there's no sign of any turbines no, on houses yet. The, the, I think there's a lot of hurdles to jump over for that. Yeah. But the, the solar is definitely there because even the ideal the ideal setting for solar is it's, it's UV light it's based on now, mm. and cool. It's a bit like a car. It, yeah, it, that's it's true, like, isn't it? The cool of the panels. They don't, they don't like it. The sum, no, summers. It, and everyone it, thinks that's going to be the best time. It's not. It okay. doesn't. It doesn't work on heat. No. It, it purely works on... This on, time of year is quite good then, probably. It is. Yeah, I mean, like so even the other day there, if you think of the average house is using about 12 kilowatts a day, there was one day last week where I produced 35 kilowatts. Wow. So that's three houses mm -hmm. worth of, a, of electric for one day. Well, you're welcome back anytime if you've got more tips and things, but uh, obviously there's more and more companies, I'm, I presume, going to come online to, to fill this market. Yeah, there's 
well, as well as the company I work for, mm. there's about three or four others that are doing it regular now, and our phones are just ringing off the hook. So you can get it, you just have to maybe wait a little bit of time now. I think the lead time with, with most of us now is probably six to nine months. Right, that long. But there is a process that can that can take up to a couple of months where you have to put these G98 and G99 forms in, you have to get approval by the MUA. Yeah. So it, it's just, if you want it, get your name down for it.